In this week's video, come with us as we travel down to the steel engineering works who are making the shell for our brand new narrowboat and find out exactly what's involved in building a new boat as we chat to Liam from Oakham's and Gary from Colcraft Engineering. Good morning, Narrowboat Life Unlocked. So this is take two for you, take 50 for me. You're always looking dead glamorous on the camera, so I thought I'd give myself a bit of a facelift. What do you think? Got some nice, it's got Paul's hairstyle, bit of a sweep, and I've got Anthony's long hair. I've got, I've basically got your two's hairstyles combined. What do you think? Should have been a girl, shouldn't I? So, aside from looking glamorous today, let's give you an update on the boat. As of this morning, we were starting to pack everything up. So all your joinery is getting packed, getting wrapped, getting made nice and secure, ready for transit. We've got the kitchen still to finish, but aside from the kitchen, everything's good. So we're, we're, we're on task, on, on track. We're on track for completion. Beautiful. Uh, we're going to store it in the warehouse. Coal crafter are a little behind. Um, so it should have been in manufacture this week. It's going to be another two weeks ish before we get that shell going. Um, but I'm not worried. I'm not concerned. We've got two other boats to get out and then we're on yours permanently. So as it stands of today, December, we're going to have you in the shed. That'll be both the boats, yours and Phil's. We'll have joinery here. We are, we're good to go. Uh, engines ordered. Engines coming to me on Friday, actually, Friday this week. Um, and, uh, it's just the sofa. So sofa's going into production tomorrow. Um, it's gonna look dead nice. Everyone loves the fabric, it's beautiful. We had some good comments on that fabric. So let's uh, let's get the show on the road, as they say, or let's get the show on the boat. Yeah, very nice. All right, guys, there's my video update for you. So you give me one, now I've given you one. Look at that. We're on track today, we're doing well. We're doing well, guys, over and out. Well, we've got a long trip ahead of us because we're going down to Coalcraft, which is in Long Itchington, locally known as Long Itch. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> it's not far from Leamington Spa. Uh, we're going to meet Liam from uh, Oakham's and we're also going to see the progress of our boat build, aren't we? Yeah, we're hoping it's not just a base plate. I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a bit of a long drive yeah. just for that. Yeah, we don't want to go all that way and just see a base plate on yeah. the ground. Uh, yeah, so we're hoping to see some work in progress. We've no idea till we get down there, but we're excited, aren't we? Very excited. Yeah, yeah can't um, wait. Yeah, and the steel shell is going to be slightly different from the boat we've got at the moment. She's a Tyler Wilson shell. The bow's slightly different, the stern slightly different and some, the walls are slightly different. I, I think, think Liam now. was saying that the sides are different so ours is a Joshua bow which means it slopes up um, and the sides um, after the rubbing streak slope down um, and the ones on the Oakham's boat are, are straight sided and it's more of a bulbous front. Um, what that actually means is we get more room inside the boat yeah. um, because things are sort of 90 degrees rather than sort of curving round. Um, and there's more seating area, like more available seating area at the bow. Yeah, so we're looking forward to seeing Liam. We've not seen him for a while, yeah. so we're gonna have a drink and a catch up, maybe a coffee, maybe get a bite to eat, uh, but we're very excited. So let's get down to Long Itchington. Yeah, how long is it, two hours? Yeah. Are we nearly there, yeah? Uh, no, 30 minutes, yeah. I'm 37, I didn't think we were that far. It better be worth it. Yeah, it will be. This is Liam, who's going to fit out our new boat, and all of his shells are supplied by Coalcraft. The minute we stepped in, you could see this place was a real hive of activity, and it was amazing to see. Just simply can't explain how exciting it feels to see your boat at this early stage. So you're 
gas locker will be in this region here. The gas locker lids are done and then there'll be two lockers to access your bow thruster. Because you're going to be electric, you're going to have both a bow and a stern thruster. So you can get movement on, on both sides. And they're the 48 volt Pro Vetus. How long do you think it'll be before the shell's finished? So talking to Colcraft today, you've got about two weeks left on your shell. The, the base of the boat is now formed in tack weld. We've got the roof to put on on the side and then uh, finish off the welding before dressing. So two to three weeks and the shell will be ready for completion. Is there a reason that you've chosen 60 feet? Um, the, the common myth is uh, 58 foot that goes around the canal. Um, it's, it's debatable um, whether 60 foot makes a considerable difference to that. I think the colder in Hebel is where you might have a few slight issues. Um, Generally speaking, 60 foot is a good even number to explore the majority of the network before you get too large, going up to 70 foot and beyond. Yeah. And you're explaining to us about the walls being flatter, and that, what's the advantage of that? So we use what's called a brum base. The brum base means you get square sides all the way down. It gives you a much larger footprint internally because your 6 foot 10 becomes the optimum width on the external, whereas before, for example, with the Joshua bow, you get slope size, which then take away from some of the space that would then be internally uh, off your floor plan. At the minute, you can see a lot of steel work inside. The steel work's helping create that shape. All that will get taken out, and then that keeps a rigid shell all the way down to give you some nice clean lines all the way down. We asked Liam how long it takes to design and then build a boat. So it varies between the boats, whether it be a narrow boat, wide beam, the length. Typically speaking, I'd allow three months for the build of the shell. We'd start initiating some drawings. You'd then have the steelwork fabricated and bent off site. And then when it arrives, then we'd then start the fabrication. And Colcraft would normally take about two months at that stage. Yeah. And can you explain the shape of the stern to us compared to our boat, our current boat? Um, you've got a Tyler Wilson at the minute, which is a Joshua bow. Yeah. Um, the, the, the shape of each boat is, is really down to the shell builder, so Colcraft has their own unique style, as does Tyler Wilson, as does the various companies. Um, the shape of your bow is quite bulbous at the front, whereas the Joshua bow is a bit more pointed. Um, and the advantage of the bow that you're receiving is you're going to get a lot more seating in your bow area, and also a lot more seating in the stern as well. Being a square stern, you, um, you, you, you have the availability to have seats on the back and the sides. We asked Liam if he had any advice for anyone thinking of buying a new narrowboat. My advice would be to shop around, speak to different boat builders, find a boat builder that you feel comfortable with, and when you have found a boat builder that you feel comfortable with, secure that slot early on, and, and expect to wait for at least a year. Boat building times at the minute do vary between boat builders, but there is a, a long waiting list with, with many of the companies. I know some people expect you to have a warehouse full of boats that they can look around, but that's not the case, is it? No, certainly not. Um, I mean, Colcraft in, in this facility, they have a range of shells, all at different progress, and it's, just, it's the same in, with our facility as well. We have different shells at different levels of progression, some early on, some quite late on, um, but each boat is tailored to the individual as well. So what you see is not always what you get, because it will be down to your individual choices. Narrowboats in the past have always been a depreciating asset, but recently they've been holding the value, and we asked Liam if he thought this trend would continue. I, I do. I think there's been a big shift in narrowboats recently. We're, there's a big progression now going from diesel over to electric. Electric propulsion in the previous years has been massively expensive. That has reduced in cost, but ultimately inflated the overall cost of a narrowboat still. Uh, I think we're going to find a new level playing field with boats as we progress more into electric. And uh, I think the where we're at now is probably a, a level balance. Um, for narrowboating, certainly for the future. I think the use of narrowboats also changed. We've gone less, um, we've gone less as a vacation boat, and we're more liverboards now. And the liverboard boats have a lot more involved and a lot, a lot more technology behind them. So, where are we off? We're getting the show on the road, aren't we? We are. So Liam suggested we get the show on the road. That's exactly what we're doing, literally. We're going down to Colcraft again. Um, we're going to do some filming. We should be moving the boat and filling with water. Yeah, we any water. We wanted to film the progress of the boat for you guys. Yeah. So we saw the shell only about 11, 11 days, days ago. ago. Um, so 
from pictures we've been sent recently, it looks like they've really cracked on with it. Yeah. We can't believe how much they've done in 11 days. We're going to go inside and hopefully talk to Gary from Cold Craft. Yeah. He's reluctant to talk to camera, we've been told. But we'll see what we can do. Yeah. yeah. So we can't wait to go inside, can yeah. we? So come, come on, in with, on us. with us. Let's have a look around. This is how our shell looked last time we came to visit. Well, the team have certainly been busy and we can't believe what they've done. Well, Gary agreed to chat to us and we asked him all about Coldcraft and when did it start? It started in 1974, my father started it. Um, I left school in 76, um, so yeah, I've been here 46 or 47 years from my sin, so yeah. quite a while. Yeah, blimey. And can you tell us a bit about this boat that's our boat behind you? This boat, yeah, it's, um, it's the latest design. It's um, it's got a square stern, sort of a copy of a Euro cruiser stern, a bit more space, a bit more social area. What a lot of people seem to want these days, yeah. more sociable outdoor space. Yeah, and the bow, our current boat at the moment, we've got a Joshua bow, and you're explaining the difference between that and the bow. So a Joshua bow is like a, a design of an old boat. There was little Woolwich, um, Joshua bows. There's, there's some real old boats. Uh, Harland and Wolf used to make quite a few different design boats yeah, so, yeah. Um, and what about the thickness of this did you say it's 10 mil so steel? you've got 10 mil on the base plate six mil all the way up to the gunnel and then the superstructure the cabin that is all four mil steel all over it's got a finger grip handrail for good um, grip when you walk along the gunnel your boat's got an enclosed taff rail at the back nice little seating area to sit on um, yeah. We asked Gary if there are any challenges fitting the skylights. Skylights, yeah. Liam's favourite skylights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a big hole to put in a roof. So when you've got a camber in a roof that we've got, then you start to take out as much material as we, we are. You have to put quite a lot of um, heavy steel back in to hold the structure solid. So when people walk along the roof, yeah. it doesn't turn upside yeah, down. Yeah. So. And we all know about increasing costs. Would you say that the cost of steel has dramatically increased this past year? Or it something? has. It's gone um, absolutely stupid. Yeah, it's over. It's over doubled. Um, it's sort of levelling off a bit now. Where we finish up, I don't really know. No, I don't. No, because I think this power, power is going to be a big thing. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, they put surcharges on different things now for the energy. Yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. And. I suppose, is there more of a demand now, you'd say, for narrowboats in the past year or two since lockdown? It's... So, we do, we do 50 shells. We do roughly one a week, um, yeah. steel shells, to, to customers like Liam, other customers, Aqua Narrowboats, Napton Narrowboats, Black Prince Boats, Ohio Boats, all the Ohio companies. A lot of them have boats off us. Um, in our prime, we used to do 100 a year, we used to do two a week. So the demand is probably, it's probably still the same as it was, mm -hmm. but there's more people out there now building boats. Yeah, so yeah. it's watered down a little. I think we've still got the lion's share of the market. The thing with these days is, is the machinery you need now to, to, to make a, a narrow boat to what you used to in the olden days. It was just oxyacetylene and a welder and you can make a boat. Yeah. Now it's all CNC, we've got high definition plasma cutter, 3D modelling right. and all of that now, where we used to have to cardboard pattern and yeah. now we've got 3D modellers, so right, right. it makes wow. life a lot. 
lot easier. Yeah. Can you explain the strake and what the strake is for? Right, so you've got your, your rubbing strake um, on the side of the boat. We put extra strakes on. This strake down here is the important one, a very important one, because that's just underneath the water line. That's where your boat is going to be banging against the side of the bank. Then you've got the next one up, which is when you're in locks, that's where you're going to have contact. Um, all our rubbing strakes are continually welded, continually welded underneath and on top. Um, so you'll never get no rust seepage. Yeah. If they're not welded 100% top and bottom, you will get crying rust. Right. Because it seeps behind it after a little bit of time. So that's all. Well, the whole boat is welded inside and outside. And we pick them up in the air and we weld underneath them as well. So they're 100% welded inside and out. Yeah, yeah. And can you explain, is there a difference between the tank? So the, the tank for the water is stainless steel, is that right? The, your tank is an integral tank painted out with twin pack paint. Um, I'm not sure what toilet you're having, whether you're having a macerated toilet, which would have a stainless steel tank, or what toilet system you're having, there's so many different ones. Your diesel tank is integral to the boat. You've got your keel cooling tanks, which is like equivalent to your car radiator, that cool the engine down. There are skin tanks that go around under the, inside the boat, but round to the contact for the exterior of the boat, for the cooling of the water on the external of the boat. Right, okay, great. Yeah. Uh, one question we were asked, and I don't know what they're talking about, but they were saying about the swim of the boat. Okay, so Coalcraft is quite renowned for having a nice swim. Um, the swim hasn't changed. The swim under, underneath, whether it's a round stern, a trad, a square, semi-euro, it's the same swim underneath. Um, and they're quite renowned for being able to reverse, where a lot of narrow boats don't reverse very well. Right, okay. So it is... It is tried and tested, and we have built thousands of them. Yeah. I hate to think how many yeah, we've yeah. built to yeah. have the time. But everybody that drives a boat always comes back and says, oh, we can't believe that. We, we've heard that from various yeah. people. When we told them that we were getting a coal craft, said they've got a coal craft and they absolutely love them. Yeah. So it has got a really good reputation. And we're getting bow thrusters and stern thrusters. Is that sort of the norm now? No, 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 no. So Liam's gone the green route. So at the moment he's doing lots of uh, E-line, Vetus E-line uh, electric propulsion. He's chose to go for a stern, electric stern thruster and electric bow thruster. Um, a generator to back up your battery propulsion. So it's a version of a hybrid system. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing about it, you've got a generator, so you'll have a gas-free boat because you'll have an electric cooker, which a lot of people ask for yeah. gas-free boats. So, yeah. 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 It's, I um, think, yeah, for us, because we've lived on the boat for two years, there's things that we've learned that, you know, don't work for us and things that do work, things like the oven, um, the hob, and also carry it, we're going to go, uh, gasless and coalless. Yeah. Um, can you see that being? Yeah, like some people have uh, little wood burning stoves, little coal burning stoves, or multi fuel stoves. Um, yeah, like when you're going for skylights, like you're going for, if you had a solid wood burning stove, you're going to have a problem of soot. Right. You know, you, you, only so far you can go with the chimney and it will fall back on the boat. So yeah. there's always that downsize. But some people like wood burning stoves on the boat. Everybody's different on their their leash of what they they, they really want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you build your own boats as well, don't you? Well, yeah, we've got yeah we fit out boats, we fit out yeah narrow beam boats, wide beam boats. Um, yes, yeah. All based on the same. You know, um, Liam's Oakham's boat is it's a coal craft boat. It, it will have Liam's name on Oakham's. It'll be an Oakham fit out on a Coalcraft boat. Mm. Whereas you buy a full fit boat off me, it's a Coalcraft, Coalcraft, what they would call a Coalcraft, Coalcraft. Yeah. Uh, the straight sides, aren't they? So, so, so they do um, narrow beam boats, normal narrow beam boats, they start with a, um, a two metre base plate, um, and then there's a slight camber out on the side of the hull. And then a long while ago, they did a boat called a Brummagem Square. So, the sides are parallel. Um, the way Liam fits out boats because he's on a CNC router machine and makes all of his furniture to go in. So I've told him the shape, the internal dimensions. So Liam, I have to stick hard and fast for that. So Liam makes all his fit out just to just put it in. Yeah. What would you say this boat would weigh when it's 
finished? When it was finished, um, it would be 12 to 13 tonne, I would wow. say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got concrete paving slabs ballast, you'll have ballast in the boat just to get the boat down in the water. The displacement of a narrow boat is quite, you wouldn't believe, you put it in the water, you've still got to put some weight in to yeah. get, you must get the counter in the water so it doesn't cavitate. Um, yeah. Yeah, and what's, what's the draft on this boat? Your draft is a 21 inch draft, oh, okay. yeah, um, which is plenty. Yeah. Because over the years, the canals have got like more shallow and shallow, they just silt up. Um, and they've, like 21 inch draft now has been the norm for quite a long while. Yeah. In the early days, there was two foot draft. We used to do two foot, two foot six, three foot. They used to put three foot a boat in the water, but yeah. you'd be dragging the bottom now. Everywhere yeah. you go, you'd be dragging yeah. it. Have you got a preferred method of blacking, or what would you recommend that people go for? So, well, I use Jotel 90. So, your boat will be painted inside and outside with Jotel 90 grey, and then below the top rubbing strip, all the way down, will be Jotel 90 uh, black. Jotel 90 is the best, best adhesive paint you can get on just raw, non-shot blasted steel. It is a real good product, it's a good product, yeah. For anyone that's thinking of buying a brand new narrowboat, what would you recommend they do? Come to Coldcraft. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have yeah. you got any advice for them? Um, I'll be too biased if yeah. I said, but um, just spend your money right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do your due diligence, really, yeah, and go you must, with a reputable you company like yourself? Yeah, yeah, and it's easy for me to say that, because yeah. I've got history, but yeah. our boats stand the test of time. You go and find a second-hand one of ours that's been fit out professionally. They hold their money. Um, yeah, yeah, just do your homework. Make sure you yeah. buy the product. You get what you pay for Yeah. at yeah. the end of the day. Um, some people can afford one of ours and some people can't, and that's it. Gary, that was amazing. Thank <laughs> you very much. You were natural. <laughs> natural. Could you show me you grab that mic up? Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Yeah. That was really good. Thank yeah. you. Ah, oh, well, that was amazing, it was. wasn't it? We're back. We are. What do we think now that we've seen the show? It's just become really real now, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, um, because we know the way Liam builds the boats, mm. that once that show's completely finished and delivered, it, it's, it's not going to take long at quick, all, is it? it? for mm. fit out so yeah yeah we're very excited mm. and a big thank you to Colcraft and the whole team at Colcraft for putting up with us for the day they had to turn the music off so we yeah, could yeah they film. were really welcoming weren't they yeah yeah and Gary was so knowledgeable which you know you can understand yeah. with the years of experience he's got and a big thank you to Liam for giving up his time talking to us as well well I'm coming down with us as well yeah yeah I know so yeah we're mega excited it feels very real now doesn't it now that we've touched the boat and seen it yeah. like the steel yeah it definitely shell does. finished make sure you watch next time when we continue our boat build videos and don't forget to subscribe it really does help our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications because you don't want to miss any future videos and keep your comments coming we really do like to receive and reply to them it's really interesting to see what people have to say yeah yeah oh brill well thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you next time take care bye bye